Hello and welcome to day two of Can Month. Today I'm going to be talking about some Canadian YA-ish, not quite children's fiction. The first book I'm going to be talking about is Half Brother by Kenneth Opal. Kenneth Opal is actually a pretty well-known author. He wrote the Silverwing books. I don't know if you remember those. They were like from the perspective of bats and they're actually pretty good. And he also wrote Airborne, which I never actually read, but heard was very good. Half Brother is about 13 year old Ben whose parents are scientist biology people and they move him from his home in Ontario across the country to BC where I live because they got jobs at the university where I go to. Their jobs are basically to take in this baby chimp named Zan and teach him sign language. I bought this book when it came out because Kenneth Opal actually came to my high school and he was being a spokespeople for the release of it and he was hilarious. Like, he is one of the funniest dudes ever and I was like, yes, I'm gonna start reading more of your books again. Um, but I didn't realize that it isn't really necessarily high school age. It is definitely written for the kind of like, I'd say like, 10 to 13 year old range so because I didn't know that I didn't enjoy it as much because I was like around 17 at the time if I had known that going into it I might have enjoyed it a little bit more um, or if I had read it when I was younger probably but that was something that just like threw me off a bit the story mainly follows Ben and his relationship with Zan and his dad and the students that they have helping with the program are just dicks and his mom gets kind of caught in the middle there, touches on some animal ethics issues, especially in scientific research, and questions about if Zan is really part of the family because that's how Ben and his mom kind of start to see it, and then the dad's like, no, this is a science experiment, and bleh. There is some weird stuff though that I'm like, ugh, the 70s, why? Where his mom would breastfeed Zan, the chimpanzee. It is a good story though, and like there were moments where I was like, huh! What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? That can't happen. Let me know if there's any other Kenneth Opal books that I need to be checking out though. The next book is Pirate's Passage by William Gilkerson. This book is beautifully illustrated and it's actually all done by the author who is apparently regarded as like a very important and famous illustrator person on the East Coast, which I didn't know. There's lots of illustrations on the inside too, like this one of Blackbeard. Not having a great day. This book is set in Nova Scotia, which is one of the Atlantic provinces in Canada. I think it might actually be set in Mahone Bay, which would be amazing because Mahone Bay is dope. It's set in 1952 and there is this massive storm. And this eccentric old sea captain washes up on the shore and he ends up living in this inn that Jim and his mom run and Jim is the main character. And the old sea captain who's living in the inn tells Jim and his friend all of these very suspiciously detailed stories about famous pirates from history. I particularly enjoyed the ones about the women pirates. Shocking. And I read this when I was like 12 or 13 in the height of my pirate obsession when all I wanted to do was pretend I was a pirate. Apparently the story was also turned into like an animated movie that was on the CBC earlier this year and I didn't even know about it so I clearly need to watch that. But this book is beautiful. Please read it. The next book I'm going to be talking about is White Jade Tiger by Julie Lawson. This book is also set exactly where I live but was less distracting for some reason. So it follows Jasmine. Jasmine who has a tragic event happen to her and she has to move from outside of the city into the city with her aunt. And she starts going to the Chinatown in our city, our city, like we hang out together. And she ends up going into this one specific store. I know exactly which store it is. And she ends up coming out of the store and having time travel back to the 1880s. So she gets thrown into the time of the building of the CPR, the Canadian Pacific Railway. She gets thrown into this time and she ends up on this quest in search of the White Jade Tiger. So the book obviously touches on the issue of Chinese labor that was used for the making of the CPR and it's one instance of many in terms of Canada's extreme racism towards people from many different Asian countries. This book is so good. I was obsessed with it when I read it when I was like 11 or 12. Very impactful. 
I was talking to my sister about it recently and she said she remembers it being very sad. So good, please read. The last books I'm gonna be talking about in this video are the Dear Canada series. And there's also a Dear America series as well. And wait, let me get one. So they all kind of look like this and this one was actually written by Julie Lawson. They're all written in diary format from the perspective of a young girl during a important historical event. This one is like the gold rush in BC. There's also one written by Kit Pearson who I talked about in the last video for the War of 1812. Go back Thursday to when we burned down the White House. I really like these books because I love reading historical fiction and these books actually do talk about a lot of the really awful things um, about Canadian history that, as I've discussed before, can often be looked over. This one is about Ukrainian internment in Canada. This one is set at the beginning of World War II and it discusses how Canada refused entry to many Jewish refugees. And this is something that Canada has had a really bad history with generally, even to this day, right now, with the Syrian crisis and the fact that Canada has accepted some of the lowest amounts of refugees. So this was the worst one for me. This one's about the Halifax explosion of 1917. I actually read this book when I was back visiting the East Coast and in Halifax because for some reason I just thought that'd be like a great idea. That'd just be like a novel thing to do. And it induced full-on anxiety attacks of imminent death. Also, I used to think that these books were real. I didn't realize it was historical fiction because I thought the author names on the books were like people who had like compiled and edited all of the journals, but the actual journals themselves were written by real people. So that was a bit of a rude awakening when I figured that out. Because I thought that they were real, this book gave me a lot of anxiety about the expectations I had for my own level of journaling because I was like, oh no, I'm gonna have to do this. Like I'm gonna have to like write and communicate what life was like in this period of time to like pass down to the ancestors in my family. So actually, fuck these books.